necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. everybody and welcome. Now tonight we're going to be talking with Judica Ellis about spells. Now Judica is an author, an editor, a card reader, an educator, aromatherapist, and spiritual advisor. She's been practicing magic arts since childhood and her numerous books include Encyclopedia of, of Spirits and Encyclopedia of Witchcraft. And um, what we're going to really talk about tonight Ad, goes along with her encyclopedia of 5,000 spells because um, she, that's what we're talking about tonight, spells. Um, okay, questions from the chat room here at Para-X are welcome. And if you're listening in and not in the chat room, you can plenty of time to join us at paraxradionetwork.com. Judica, welcome back and it's been so long. I'm so happy to be here, Marla. Thank you. Thank you uh, for having me. Well, I I will always have you. I mean, it's just you're so <laughs> you're so busy that you know this. It's a good thing, you know. And and hey, so busy busy is better than the opposite for sure. Exactly. So I don't mind. I don't take it for, you know personally that you know you're not coming on my show. But uh, <laughs> ah, I'm here. <laughs> we finally made it, and all is well. Um, yeah, and and so you know we're talking about spells. We're talking a little bit about magic. Well, that goes one in hand to the other. And let me just start out by saying you know that magic goes back to ancient times, right? And back then, many cultures do what we now call magic, but it was nothing more n- normal for them except everyday life. You know, it wasn't anything special. You know, people back way back then were nature based and everybody knew their own special abilities. Well, you know. I mean, and it, yes yeah, yes and no. Yeah. Yes and no. I mean that that, that is true. But yeah. also I don't know, I had this I had this very profound moment this week where I, I shared something on my Twitter account. I saw this um it was somebody else's post. It was a little carving of an animal. Mm-hmm. Um, small. Mm-hmm. And it was 40,000 years old. Ouch. Not 4,000, 40,000. <laughs> wow. And it was, you know, it looked like a modern Zuni, Zuni fetish. And I, we think about, like, I, I know what you're saying, and, and that, that is true. And that is true 500 years ago or 1,000 years yeah, ago. Yeah, I'm thinking more like our, maybe, our ancestors, kind of. Yeah, well, they're all our ancestors. Well, who, yeah. Who knows? The one- <laughs> who, who carved that? Who, I know, but it's it's yeah. it's like mind blowing because how did people live forty thousand years ago? But uh-huh. that whoever carved that little animal could have been any of our ancestors or all of our ancestors. Well, probably because if you go back to you so know? far, yeah, right. Because we are all such miracles. I mean, our our existence is magical. Every single one of us. I mean, if you think about it, it's mind-blowing. If you are here, then all your ancestors, I mean, a chain of ancestors, back to the beginning of ancestry, (laughs) they remained alive long enough to reproduce. And if you think about all the ways you can die, um, Mm -hmm. it's incredible. It's an incredible thing. I also, you know... I think a lot because I have spent my life, you know, I was born in New York mm-hmm. and I lived in LA and 
I have spent most of my life in, in urban areas, and I have a family where, you know, long history of urban dwellers. And I wrote the foreword for Christopher Penzak's, um, uh, I, don't, I don't even know what it's called, uh, City Witchcraft, City yeah, Magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, the urban people also have their magic. So I think people did live, mo- I mean, inevitably we had to live closer to nature just yeah. because we didn't have the technology. But I think that there were always specialists. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, you know, the shamans and the witches. And it, it, we we separate things from magic now that they didn't. You know, healers, mm-hmm. yeah. bone setters, they're all... It, it wasn't distinct. You know, now we have these real... We we draw these dividing lines with oh this is the mundane and this is the magical mm-hmm. and now I'm going to put my magical hat on and then I'm going to you know go back to real life or something. Uh-huh. Now, I, I think that's a fairly you know that's a modern perception, and I, yeah. I I don't find it an accurate one. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And you know, and and the thing about now is we often take things for granted. You know, I mean, sure. some some practitioners don't have the uh, any. Thing about history in their mind, they don't think about it. They, sure. do, you know, it's they're all neo things, neo pagans, and and I think, and maybe you do too. It's important for us to kind of learn how our ancestors practiced. Um, you know, it's, oh it's, sure, it's yeah. and, and it's a shame that people don't. You know, um, yeah. it's not that we have to say, okay, well, look at the burning times happen here, and you know, and Salem, blah blah. It's not that. It's what our people are, the people that right, our our particular lineage, right? Yeah, right. And I mean, I I think uh, ancestor work is probably some of the most profound magic yeah. that you can be doing, and it's extremely satisfying. Mm-hmm. But you know, I mean. I, I think that is also, you know, when you buy an American history textbook, mm-hmm. in general, you know, it, it's like a, it, it's like a ran, it's like a date. I mean, of course, with every book you have to start somewhere, and, and you know, there's no book that, a single book that can contain everything. Sure. Because I mean, but I mean, American history. Where does it start? 1492, and. 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, and maybe they'll give a little overview of what Columbus found Mm -hmm. when he came to the Americas. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's not like there was nothing happening, and then he showed up, and all of a sudden there's history. (laughs) You know, there there were centuries and centuries and centuries of history without, you know, on their own. And, I mean, you know, you can, we, we divide the common era and before the common era, you know, arbitrary, you know, zero, you know, the birth of Christ, which, mm-hmm. you know, we don't even know if he was born in that year, but it's like, we're going to start in zero and then everything before that is just, is just a lead up. It's a preface. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, and it's sort of a mindset, but, you know, the burning times, and, and you know, and that's the whole thing too, where do you start it? Yeah. In, in my encyclopedia of witchcraft, I start, um, you know, in, in about the, the, I think the twelfth century, mm-hmm. but you could you could probably find, you know, you know, you could probably find some. Well, you can find. You could go back to ancient Rome because there there is also a witch panic um, and persecution in ancient Rome. You know, pre Christian, uh, Christ, pre Christian Rome. But a lot of people don't go back that far. They will start in the 14th century or the 15th century, and where do you end it? You know, do you end it in the 16th century, in the 17th century, in the 18th century? So to be very aware that these are all, you know, these these are dates that someone selects, but it, it's not like it's not like they're not burning witches in places right now. Mm-hmm. Well, in some countries, they still do. Right. Depending, <laughs> yeah. depend, depending where you are right yeah. now, you, you could, uh-huh. you know, we, we would not be having this conversation. Yeah, yeah. If we were in Saudi Arabia. Or not we, publicly. We've, we've right. been dead already. India. Yeah. Rural, rural India. Yeah. Particular Saudi Arabia. Sure. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really scary. <laughs> it's very depressing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I got a question in the chat room that talks about 40,000 years ago. Um, she said, what's to say the civilization 40,000 years ago wasn't high technology like we have now? Civilization can fall sure. apart and revert to us, sure. you know, and all that. So, yeah. Sure, of course. And, I mean, and what do, I mean, even what does civilization mean? Do they have? At, at what point is there a civilization? I mean, mm-hmm. we, we see Gobekli Tepe. So there was, there was enough sophistication to to build that you know mm-hmm. that temple, and we don't know were there temples before that that we just haven't you know maybe you know if if nothing survives do we know? Yeah. Um, in in my book Daily Magic I talk about archaeo archaeo astrological sites like all those really like Stonehenge mm-hmm. and Newgrange all those. I mean, these, these, these. I, I, I'm not even sure they're not buildings; they're constructions that were constructed so accurately that even now, the you know the the equinox and the solstices, the light is hitting in the right place. There's a particularly older one in Egypt, and we find these sites all over the world. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they they are built with such mathematical precision. I, I think it would be very difficult for us to build them now. Uh, and yet yeah. they did it back then. So I mean, w- w- there's so much we don't know. It's just it's fascinating. I know, and and the frustrating part is a lot of it we never will know because there's no way to find yeah. out. Yeah. 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 And there were. I mean, I know this is sort of. Huh, I don't know, Marla. You know, there's there's a Velvet Underground song in which Lou Reed sings about you know he tried the country. And now he wants to go back to the city. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, th- this concept that until recently there weren't cities, but mm-hmm. Babylon was a yeah. huge city. Yeah. And, you know, there are cities in China and India and Timbuktu and, you know, places that go back centuries and centuries and centuries. Mm-hmm. Um, so there were, there were a lot of urban practitioners way back when. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, we get into history. That'll be the whole show. Let's jump up. (laughs) (laughs) Seriously, because it's such an enigma, you know. Then you we have to talk about. So so let let's go um, a little bit about magic spells because um, some people think that regular magic always requires spells, but it doesn't, right? No. Um, it doesn't. I mean, my magic is happening all around us all the time. What a, what I, you know, the way I teach it is, you know, magical energy is a natural thing. Mm-hmm. Um, there is, you know, the Egyptian mythology of how magical energy came to be. And so a magic spell is the harnessing of that energy for a purpose. Mm-hmm. You know, if you are a, a lot of it, I think, is your perspective. Like, if you are sort of a magical person, you're seeing something magical all the time. The moon, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. is you know, we have a beautiful, beautiful full moon. That's magic. Yes. And um, you know, things that happen, you know, these you you have an experience and it changes your life. Mm-hmm. And it. it that that you know, I mean, magic could be good or it might not be good, but you know that's yeah. magical. But a magic spell is a conscious. It is a conscious attempt to achieve a goal and to take control over your life, and then we get into spell casting. But some of the stuff is, you know, I mean, when you know when I, I, I you know, for me when I cook, I like to cook, and mm-hmm. you know if I cook for my my whoever you know my loved ones. As I'm, as I'm cooking, I'm you know, I mean technically maybe that's a spell. I'm I'm blessing it. I'm encouraging mm-hmm, them to be mm-hmm. healthy and happy. And you know, yeah. it's a very little spell. It's not a it's not a sophisticated spell. But I mean that, that yeah. is that is still magic. And I I find magic in music. I find magic in you know you you'll find magic in a lot of you know handicrafts, clothing that people mm-hmm. make. The mm-hmm. things that people make, it's just the earth is full of magic, magic power, magical energy. So, so it is really all around us. 
if and you we know, are oh, open sorry. to it. No, no, I, no. I um, was looking through your big book of practical spells, and there was a comment here that made me smile really well, and it's t- what you're talking about now. Um, I'm paraphrasing, but you said that, like you said, magic isn't unique or reserved for people mm-hmm. who have mis- mystical blood. Magic is common is as common as dirt. And I like that. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a lot of magic in dirt. There is a lot of spells involving dirt. There mm-hmm. is a lot of um, healing therapy, you know, therapeutic, uh, you know, uh, I'm so inarticulate tonight. Um, there's a lot of healing therapies involving dirt, dirt, and sand, and mud. And, you know, so it's so simple. You, you, there are certainly many wonderful things you can go out and buy, and I, I'm not discouraging anyone from, you know, doing some generous retail therapy at their favorite witch shop. That, you know, they need our support. But also, mm-hmm. you can just go outside and pick up some dirt and do some stuff with it—a stick. There's, mm-hmm. there's a lot you can do with it. You know, you don't you don't really need to buy anything. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? Um, talking about you know what a spell is um you know long before organized religion people began praying to their god and practice practice ah, practitioner now i've got it from you um (laughs) you know in in, in ancient greece and rome you know they were using spells to bind people up different outcomes and sporting events and business and all that stuff and some say that prayer is actually a spell. Now, what do you think about that? I was taught that the difference between a prayer and a spell is a prayer is a request and a spell is a demand. Perfect. That's the one I know, too. <laughs> but, but, I mean, they are certainly closely related. Yeah. And, and they, they complement each other. Just because you cast a spell doesn't mean you can't accompany it with a prayer and vice versa. True. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, I, I told somebody sometime when they were talking about, oh, spells are bad, spells are bad. And I go, well, you know, you pray. And that, to me, <laughs> in a sense, is a spell. And then you sure. go, oh, my God, you know, and then they don't talk to you anymore. Um, but <laughs> it's true. I mean, it, there is a similarity there. And, um, well, you know, in, in spells, there's been such uh, a concerted, you know, uh, there's a propag- so much propaganda mm-hmm. against spell casting. Yeah. And it, a lot of people, it's so, depending where you're from and who mm-hmm. raised you and your culture, for yeah. a lot, it, it's very much a knee jerk response spells bad. But, mm-hmm. you know, no, they're not. Spells are intended. Spells are intended to make your life better. That mm-hmm. is the goal. Do Are there angry people, resentful people, jealous people who do bad things? Of course. I mean, there are people who do bad things criminally and financially and in all kinds of ways. So why wouldn't you find people who do, um, you know, who cast malicious spells? Mm-hmm. But that... that that's like saying electricity is bad mm-hmm. because, it, you know, there's an electric chair. Mm-hmm. You can do bad things with electricity, but right. electricity itself is, is an energy. Mm-hmm. And the, the energy that fuels spells is neutral and, you know, according, I mean, there is actually, there is an actual Egyptian myth that discusses the creation of, of magical energy. But mm-hmm. I would say that ancient Egypt might be the last completely magic friendly civilization, mm-hmm. which, you know, is going pretty far back. Yeah. Um, it, it is intended to help you take control of your life and ward off the harsh blows of heartache that are inevitable. Life is hard mm-hmm. and full of disappointment, and we are little creatures who who are fragile and want things and are afraid of things. And mm-hmm. magical energy is there to help you combat that and to, you know, level the playing field. Mm-hmm. And 
you know, I always, I always say that every spell is ultimately a gift. You know, magical energy is a natural thing in the same way that radiation is a natural thing. It mm-hmm. exists. We, yeah. It'll exist with or without people. But magic spells are the creations of human beings. And many of them are very old. And they have been passed down and tweaked generation by generation and generation. My mother taught me um, things that she learned as a child. And, I, and my mother was over 90 when she died. So, she, you know, this, this is going back. And she learned it as a child. So um, she learned it from adults. Mm-hmm. So, And we all kind of tweak. We tweak. And you, and you should never be afraid to tweak a spell to make it work for you. Because that's what people do. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, talking about good and bad spells is like talking about good and bad witches because mm. t- somebody's good is somebody else's bad, you know? So it to us, something bad might be something good, and it, it's kind of hard to define between the two because everybody believes oh, yeah, in what they believe. You need to know the whole story. Right, right. Yeah. A lot of, you know... I mean, what, what, what is the goal? Is it a goal for malicious intent? It is a goal to cause harm? Or is it a goal to protect yourself or to protect your loved ones? Mm-hmm. It's, you know, sometimes a very fine line there. Yeah, a crazy fairy line there because it's just... <laughs> it's, yeah. we got to put our big toe over the line and if it doesn't get snapped off, you know, then we know it's okay. Um <laughs> I got a question earlier today from somebody um, that saw the banner on Facebook, and they wanted to know if people have to be a witch to do a spell. No, anybody can do a spell. All you have to do, all you, well, so all you have to be to cast a spell is a human being with a desire or a fear. Those are, you know, a desire, you want something. Or often spells are cast because you don't want something. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want the house to burn down. I don't want to lose all my money. I don't want this uh, horrible person who's abused me to come back. So sometimes it's what you want, but it, you have to have, it's very hard to cast a spell for something you don't want, really, just right. to sort of go through the motions. You, mm-hmm. Because it's your desire. It's mm-hmm. your emotion that provides the fuel. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but that's an interesting question because there's a little bit of a chicken and an egg thing going on there. Uh-huh. You know, w- what is a witch? And we don't all define a witch the same way. And there are people who would say, if you're casting spells, and especially if you're casting them successful, by definition, you are a witch. Or by mm-hmm. their definition. Yes. It might yeah. not be your definition. So these are things depending on, you know, the company you're keeping, you maybe have to you have to be a little bit discreet about who you're talking. You know, people may assume mm-hmm. yeah. you, you're a witch, which, you know, might make you happy. I mean, I, I think witch is a good thing. But, yeah. I mean, it also could be, depending on where you are, it could be a dangerous thing. And you, you the spells are intended to make your life better. They are yeah. not intended to put you in danger so yes your spell worked and now your you know uh, fundamentalist relative has locked you in the basement with no food that's no good <laughs> yeah well this person said she wanted to do a spell but she was afraid he would make her a, a, a witch and no, that would be terrible no. and you know and it's it's also though people that don't know spell work at all should probably learn to do something before they find something off the internet and do this spell that they think is valid because things can well, bounce yeah, back. People, are, people ask me all the time, is spell casting dangerous? And I think they think, what they're, what they're not saying is, will this make me go to hell? Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, that, that's not the tradition I was raised in. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, what I tell them, and, and, and this I do know, is the most dangerous thing about a spell is that they work. And you might get what you ask for. Yes. So be sure you are asking for what you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a good start. You know, um, it, it's not a game. 
you know, people I think mean, my, it is. My recommendation, and I, I do teach spell casting, and all of these things are in um, Encyclopedia of 5,000 Spells. There's much more mm-hmm. spells in there. But the book mm-hmm. you mentioned, the Big Book of Practical Spells, mm-hmm. has now it's been reissued as Pure Magic, the Big Book of Practical Spells. Mm-hmm. And there's more instruction in that book. I always recommend that people start with cleansing spells. Yeah. They're very simple. The cleansing spells just to, you know, as we go through life, we accrue spiritual debris and dust and maybe toxic vibes linging, you know, clinging to us could be bad luck, it could be, you know, all sorts of stuff. Um, but the thing with the cleansing spell, they tend to be simple. You can do them with a, in the bath. You mm-hmm. can do them with salt. You can do them with, you know, metal, clanging, you know, sound. You, there's sound cleansings. Mm-hmm. There's smoke cleansings. Mm-hmm. And what I like about cleansing spells and why they are really good for beginners is, I mean, first of all, everybody needs cleansing. Yes. But second of all, you should feel it. If you do a cleansing bath, when you get out of the bath, you should feel lighter. You should mm-hmm. feel cleansed. You know, it may or may not last very long, but you, 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 should, you should feel that uplift. And it's pretty immediate, as opposed to you cast a spell for something, and it's not like on television where, you know, I'm you know, what I call the Willow Rosenberg School of Spellcasting from Buffy, you you (laughs) cast the spell, and if it's going to work, right away the lights flicker, and there's smoke, and, you know, and then it works right away, and you know it, because but that's for TV, so you can see it working. That's not not real life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes it's fast, but sometimes it isn't. And that's for, you know, did it work? Did, did you did you actually do anything? And that, especially if you're not experienced, that's very frustrating. But a cleansing spell, you will feel it right away. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, if you don't, then it's just not the right cleansing spell for you. Try another one. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And you know, sometimes too, you do a spell. It might work immediately, but it may take right. a year for you to find out that it did. You know, I mean. It's it's nice well, to know, but you have to kind of wish, you know. You know, the magic and the mundane are not separate. And so, let's just say you're doing a um, you're doing a, 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 a an employment spell. Mm-hmm. Y- you can cast the spell, and there's sort of this illusion. I'm going to cast this employment spell, and you, you know, there's going to be a knock at the door. And it, like publishers, you know, clear, you know, clearinghouse, you know, somebody's going to be there that you've never met, and they have found you, like your fairy godmother. And <laughs> here, I have, I have your dream job for you. And I, I you know, I never say never. And so mm-hmm. I'm not telling you that 100 percent that will never happen to anyone, but it's not likely. You cast a spell, and then you go out looking for the job. You have to put, you have to make yourself available. You have to. Let people find you. You have to show people, you know, here I am, and here's here's my resume, and this is what I can do, as opposed to just sort of sitting. You know, this is sort of how people get us, like with those Instagram scams and those Facebook scams. Uh-huh. There are all those imposters. You know, all of a sudden, your favorite author. I mean, I, I, I've received one, and I know people have. You know, I, I have imposters. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people send you a DM, and it's like, I have a message for you. I mean, they've never met you. Mm-hmm. No ethical person would do this. But this, you know, I have a message for you, and I, I can do a reading for you, and, you know, and, and it's it's like out of the blue. And there there is that wish that I'm going to cast a spell, and it's enough. I'm going to cast a spell... And I can sort of sit in my, you know, in my closet and wait for true love to walk in and wait for my ideal job to walk in. And, you know, mm. boy, I could use some money. And, you know, you, you have to complement it with the mundane efforts, too. Yeah. But no. It's like you're not, you, you can do spells to get a loan, but you still have to apply for the loan. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know, you got 
Yeah, nothing falls into our laps, except sometimes we think bad stuff does. You know, for, for well, no reason. We just fell in our lap and we don't deserve it. But, you know. <laughs> well, no, I mean, occasionally things do fall in our lap. And occasionally, yeah. you know, we find ourselves in in places that we did not expect to be. Yeah. And sometimes it turns out, sometimes we don't think it's good and it turns out to be great. Mm-hmm. And, you know, spells are so, they're mysterious. Yeah, it, they're not. It's not like a cake mix or a oh. box of mac and cheese. Because you go to the supermarket, you buy the mix, you follow <laughs> the instructions, and if you follow the instructions, you, barring really unforeseen circumstances, you should get whatever is pr- something pretty much like the picture in the box. Mm-hmm. But spells are magic and they're mysterious, and sometimes they work in unexpected ways. Yeah. Sometimes they work better than you anticipated. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know, it's like sometimes you have to take a circuitous route to get to yeah. your destination. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a circuitous route right now because we have to do a quick break. So um, everybody stay back. Um, we'll be back sooner than you think, so don't wander off. We'll be back in two minutes. Cauldron will be right back, so don't go away. If you end up with webbed feet, remember, you've been warned. warned, warned, warned. As you go about your daily life, look closer. Every year across America, a staggering 4.2 million youth are homeless or trafficked. Covenant House is the national leader providing safe housing for youth 50 years strong. Every youth who walks into Covenant House gets clean clothes, hot meals, medical care, and a safe place to sleep. So look closer at Covenant House and help us fight youth homelessness. To help or get help, go to covenanthouse.org. Are you haunted by shadow people in the middle of the night? Do you secretly love all things creepy and spooky, enjoying ghost stories and horror fiction from the best storytellers? Do you have a true ghost experience you want to share, but no one will believe you? If yes, listen to the professionals on What Are You Afraid of? Horror Paranormal Show, Friday nights at 9 p.m. on ParaX Radio and at www.whatareyouafraidofpodcast.com. What are you afraid of on ParaX? Our creepy and demented hosts are on call to provide you with all your spooky needs with true ghost stories, interviews, indie music, and new horror fiction. We are ready ready to to scare scare you. Para X. Missed an episode of Stirring the Cauldron? Then be sure to check out MarlaBrooks.com and check out the archive. And while you're there, check out Marla's weekly Witches Oracle card reading. Explore the site to find many great resources, such as information on tarot, oracle readings, metaphysical consultations, and links to all of Marla's books. That's MarlaBrooks.com. Welcome back to Stirring the Cauldron. Once again, here's your host, Marla Brooks. And my guest tonight is Judah Galis, and we're talking about spells. And Judah, you know, when we were talking about um, casting and sometimes they turn in different ways, do you think the universe might sometimes either break a spell or fuel one just for the reason that they think is better? Oh, yeah. I I mean, I I do talk about this in, in, in my book. Sometimes, you know, spells don't always work. Mm-hmm. Or they don't always work the first time. And I find sometimes discussing the spells that don't work more interesting than the spells that do work. I mean, the spells that do work, you you know, you wanted to do something, you cast a spell, it worked. Um, but sometimes I think that you are asking for something, you know, so here we are in a Mercury retrograde. And mm-hmm. I was taught that one of the dangers of a Mercury retrograde is that you should assume that there is a piece of information missing. It's not that it's necessarily bad, but there is a piece of information missing. And if you had that piece of information, you might be making a different decision. And so sometimes we ask for what we, I mean, we genuinely want it at the moment, but... Maybe it's what we're asking for is not really good for us, 
Mm -hmm. or maybe it's not our destiny. Um, And the universe sort of puts it on hold. Is this what you really want? Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it's frustrating at the moment and years later you realize how lucky you were. And, um, you know, I think that if you are very persistent and you, you know, magic rewards the persistent, and if you keep doing it and if you keep kind of refining it, eventually eventually your spell will work. It may just, you know, one way or another. But, I mean, in the example I give, and this is a very extreme example, but, you know, I think it... It makes it understood, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, th- you know th- when they arrest serial killers, there is always, you know, th- the wife who, you know, they've been together since high school, and she's just, you know, shocked. I, mm-hmm. I couldn't believe this person did that, or at least that's what you know the public, you know, statement. Yeah. But you know, every time you see somebody, these, these terrible people in the universe, and somebody maybe when they were young. Or, you know, um, if they're good con people, you know, somebody talked, thought they were terrific and was madly in love and really, really, really wanted that person and maybe worked very hard one way or another to be in a relationship. So I think in particular with love spells, you mm-hmm. know, we want this person, we want this person. And a lot of love spells, especially binding love spells, are cast when the relationship is not going well. Yeah. You know, when the relationship is going well, you don't need the spell, but you are afraid that the person will leave you or they're not behaving the way they want you want them to, and so you cast that spell, but then you're stuck with them. And you know, they could turn out they could turn out to be a terrible person. <laughs> yeah. And you you could turn out that, you know, especially I, I'm I I've romantic binding spells and that's a different kind so they're the binding spells that are cast to prevent someone from doing something i i i bind you so you will not cause harm but then it's the same terminology there are the binding spells where with i love you i love you i love you i want to be with you through every lifetime never never leave me and i mean what if it works yeah what if it works? What if this person turns out to not be who you think they are? Mm-hmm. What if, you know, and, and people, you, you know, you can, you, you can make someone love you, but you can only make someone love you the way they know how to love. Yeah. You can't make someone love you the way you want to be loved. People are who they are. So uh, th- that's a dangerous thing. So sometimes it's better when the spell doesn't work. Or, you know, if the spell doesn't work, maybe maybe that's the universe telling you to reconsider. Mm-hmm. Take another look at what you're asking for. I totally is, is believe really in that. What, you know, yeah, is this, really, is this really what's best for you? Mm-hmm. And you know what? It's not like I'm bewitched when a spell goes bad <laughs> and, Aunt, and Aunt Clara forgets how to undo <laughs> the spell. You know, right, I mean, we, right, we don't go right. in with those things. And, um, right. <laughs> You know, I mean, that would be a perfect witch place to live. You know, I mean, but it's not right, viable. Right, um, right. It's not true. But then sometimes the older we get, the more we think, like Aunt Clara. Oh, man, but wouldn't that be nice? I, I just want to be in Dora and, like, I want to be able to travel without getting on the plane. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> sitting on the know, wing. Right? Yeah. Well, just go to, you know, just, just sort of go to visit Dr. Bombay wherever he is without, you know, without the hassles of... Packing no insurance and, and yeah. oh my god and you know no no you know no TSA you mm-hmm. just you just pop in <laughs> yeah I've always liked that part just you know yeah poof you're there yeah but yeah anyway. exactly <laughs> and Doro is is you know she's my kind of cheerleader um, yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> so so speaking of you know curses and whatever are bad things. Um, do curses and hexes fall into the spell category? Sure. They're, they're, they're a type of spell. Mm-hmm. So it's, okay, because so, somebody's going to sit there and say, okay, well, what's the difference between a curse and a hex? 
Are they the same? Is it just words? Um, well, there's an etymology, and you know, we're speaking in English. They may have different words in other languages. Um, uh, these are very good questions. There is actually that is actually answered in my Encyclopedia of Witchcraft, which has a, a glossary of witchcraft terms. Technically, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. technically, a uh, hex is malicious magic. Mm. It is. It is a spell. A hex is a. Sp- it is a spell that is mm-hmm. um, intended for one reason or another to cause harm, and I say that because I try to avoid that sort of dualistic good bad kind of thing because mm-hmm. we should not be, you know, should we should absolutely should. There's not enough kindness in the world, and we should not be malicious, and we shouldn't be casting hexes at people because, I don't know, it's my neighbor and, 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 and I don't know, she aggravates me, and that's it. But mm-hmm. if you have someone, you know, there are certainly an argument could be made that if someone is putting your children in jeopardy and doing terrible things and there is no other way to get rid of them and there is no justice and mm-hmm. you complain to the police and they tell you to go away, um, right. you know, so the question with a hex is always, is it justified? Mm-hmm. And that is something to think about. Is the action justified? A curse is is a curse a spell? Maybe not, because curses are often very impromptu. Curses are often verbal, mm-hmm. and some cultures have traditions of them. And a curse is where... I say what should happen to someone else. Mm-hmm. And sometimes these are elaborate. And if you, if you get angry enough, anyone can curse somebody. Mm-hmm. And you may even do it accidentally or involuntarily. Mm-hmm. And words have a lot of power. Yes. And so, um, you know, even if you, if you say drop dead to someone and you don't really mean it literally, mm-hmm. That that could be a curse. I mean, I actually do know someone who, as a teenager, um, this is not a magical person. As a teenager, she had a big fight with her mother, stormed out of the house, slammed the door, yelling, drop dead, and then, you know, got in her car and, and, you know, she was 17 and, like, drove around for a while and came home. Mm -hmm. After she pulled up, came home. And unfortunately, you know, her her mother had had a heart attack and dropped dead. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it was not her intent. She didn't right. mean it like that. She was just, it was just something to say. Mm-hmm. And, um, it, you know, it ruined the teenager's life. I'm even sure. though, Because she felt guilt. I mean, by the time I met her, she was, you know, a woman in her 50s, 60s. And um, it, it haunted her. It haunted her because did she do it? She doesn't. And it's also the last thing she said to her mother. Yeah, that that is horrible. Absolutely. But it... Yeah. it can happen. I mean, I'm sure that's not the only time it ever has. And so, yeah. Oh we're... no, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> so you have to be, you have to be careful. You have to really. Words. If you start spell casting, the more you do it, you will become very sensitive to language, mm-hmm. both your own, and I think you also start to hear what other people say to you. Like yeah. sometimes people say things like, "Don't run, you'll fall." In a way, that's a curse. Mm-hmm. Not not be careful, you know, you don't want to fall, but don't run, you'll fall. Or mm-hmm. don't do this, you'll, you know, or you'll never be any good. Oh, mm-hmm. you're, you're going to grow up to be a hollow just like your dad. The, the, the way, yeah, yeah. The, those are curses, and it's uh-huh. energy coming towards you. And after, you know, you have to be careful when anybody uses the you word to mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. You are this, or you are that. Um, you don't want to let people define you. No, and, and especially in children, you know, excuse me, Val, yeah, just, especially. it reminded me because a right. uh, girl that I grew up with and all these decades later, we're still friends, but at one point, her mother said to her, you're no good for nothing. You're not going to ever do anything right in this world. And she was, I don't know how old she was, but she was a child. And to this day, she is n- still not sure of herself about anything. Right. 
Right. You know? and, right. And I, I think that's true for a lot of us. And, and you know, yeah. sometimes it's done with love. Yeah. You know, in a, in a weird way, people say things to you in, in an attempt to protect you in their way or to, you know, they love you so much they're afraid something, you know, it's their fear is projected onto you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, let me jump around here a little bit because we're all running out of time and I want to talk a couple more things. Um because people ask all the time um, that they wonder if the spells work better or worse, should they be cast on a certain day of the week or phases of the moon or times of day or astrological signs? Um, what do you what do you tell them? Because yeah. there, there's a lot of different philosophies about this and a lot of different theories, and everybody you you know. The beauty of spell casting, ultimately, you know, is alchemy. It's finding the gold and the power within yourself. Mm-hmm. That's the most important thing. What is your magic power? And we don't, you know, like a book like Five Thousand Spells. There, there are more than Five Thousand Spells in there, but mm-hmm. no one person needs all Five Thousand Spells. Mm-mm. You need, you, you need to find and refine the dozen spells that work for you. Mm-hmm. And so, for some people. Uh, I mean, I I do pay attention to the moon phases. That mm-hmm. for me now, I mean, I'm a Cancer. I'm a moon child. Mm-hmm. And I'm very aware of the moon, yeah. and so I am conscious to do spells for increase when the moon is waxing, and spells for decrease when it's waning. In other words, um, money spells to you know. Inc- you know, if you want to increase your money, which, you know, is what a money spells you, you know, almost always for, you would do mm-hmm. that from the new moon to the full. But if you wanted to decrease debt, then you would do it from the full to the, you know, the other direction, to, through the dark moon. Um, so I pay attention to that. There are mm-hmm. people who are very conscious of planet. You know, every day has a planetary ruler, every hour, every week. But... Magic is, I think, the primal human art, and it's not just Western magic. It's not just this is this is how we do it. There's so many schools because if you um, you know Chinese astrology mm-hmm. also has you know different you know a different system of, of you know who or what rules. And in India also that you know the astrology is similar, but so you have to find what is what is what works for you and some, mm-hmm. magic should be joyous there's a fun aspect to it yes. it's not all stress and oh my god am i doing it right you should be having fun play with it and mm-hmm. see what works for you and if you are the type of person who is asking that question and is thinking about it then maybe it would really be good to get an almanac or an ephemeris and pay attention to, well, today is the day of Mercury, so I'm going to do these kind of spells. Mm -hmm. And today is the day of Venus, so I'm going to do the Venusian spells. But a lot of folk magic will just tell you to do it when you need it. Mm -hmm. It, You know, if you are heartbroken, do it now. If you are scared, do it now. Mm -hmm. There's, there's There's no right or wrong here. It's just, it, and it's not a, it's not a cookie cutter thing. It's right. not a standardized thing. It's what's going to work best for you, and that will have a lot to do with your astrological chart. I would, I would recommend that people cast their charts. You can do it for free online, mm-hmm. and look to see, even just to see what elements. Well, what are the elements in your chart? Do you have a lot of fire signs? Mm-hmm. Do you not have any air signs? You know, just that'll tell you a lot. You know, that that's sort of the blueprint of your soul and it will give you a direction. Mm-hmm. Who are your people? What is your lineage? Do you come from people who are comfortable with magic? Or are you coming from people who have, you know, generations and generations of, of fear? Are mm-hmm. you coming from an area where there was a lot of witch hunting? Because... The impact of witch hunting 
is over generations is yeah. to make you know it was to make women behave mm-hmm. you were less likely to be accused of a witch of being a witch if you were obedient if you were conventional if you listen to your you know the men in your life if you if you're very clean you know you do your housework um you know if you're somebody who maybe wants to lounge around and not get up early in the morning and go outside and dance under the moon well you know you better do that discreetly you know <laughs> so uh, you know so where you know who are your people where do you come from where are mm-hmm. you living do you have fear do you do you love witchcraft, or mm-hmm. does it make you nervous? All these things will impact yeah. how what spells work for you, and it's an evolutionary process. Mm-hmm. What, what works for me now didn't work for me twenty years ago, right? And and who knows where I'm going to be in the future? Maybe something that's not working for me now will work then. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's very true, and you know, people shouldn't be afraid of spells or anything related witchcrafty stuff i mean you know if if there's any doubt don't do it but to right, alleviate exactly. the, alleviate the doubt by learning something first before you make a decision right, right. and i think yeah. but if you are afraid to just acknowledge it and and the thing people always ask what do you need for a spell to work do you have to believe in it and no mm-hmm. you, but you, you really don't. But the thing that you mm-hmm. do need is you have to believe that life could get, could, not will, but it just, it just might get a little bit better. It could get better. And also that you deserve it. Because if you don't believe, if you are invested in you are a sinful person or you are a terrible person and you don't deserve to be happy. And cast, you're, the casting a spell is like driving with your parking brake on. Yeah. That's a good... Yeah. You, and, you're not getting there for... You know, uh, you might get there, but it's not easy. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and another part of spell work is intent. You know, and, and yes. that's kind of what yes. you're saying. You know, intent, believe in yourself, and when you do cast a spell don't have any doubt that it isn't going to work. Not when you're casting anyway. You might think about it later. But, at that um, moment, sure, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah. at, at the moment, you know, just see it in well, your mind. I, I, yeah. I think just even that it could work. It could mm-hmm. work. Because yeah. I do see, you know, I, I do, you know, when I teach, you know, my spells never work. But sometimes that's because there's a part of you that is invested and them not working. You've mm-hmm. been raised to think this is nonsense, and you're doing it, but you're a little afraid that it will work, and so you're kind of, ha, 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 it won't work. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you, you gotta, there's no point. You you have to, I mean, it, but it is like the going for that job interview. If you are 100% sure that you're never going to get this, you don't deserve it, they're never going to pick you, you radiate that when you go into the interview. Uh-huh. And there is a little bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy there. So at least for that moment, you have to be willing to think that it's a possibility. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. There'll be, you know, then you just have to get back on the horse and, and, and tr- try again. Do something yeah. else. Yeah, and if you try it and you don't like it, you know, walk away. You know, nothing's going right. to jump down right. at you and kick you in the butt and say, hey. Come back. You know, we don't do that. Um, <laughs> at least I haven't had anybody do that, and I don't think I will. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, we are running out of time. Um, it went fast. Huh? It went fast. It does. It really does, because, you know, I mean, um, you were talking, well, I, I can chat for one second or two or three. Um, you were talking about teaching um, spells. Now, where do people know or where do you do it in person? Do you do it online? Where do you, you know, fill us in on that? Oh, uh, lately I've been doing it virtually. Mm-hmm. I, um, I, you know, I'm an author and I'm an editor and I work a lot. I'm a mm-hmm. card reader. So <laughs> yes. I, um, 
I have two events coming up. I have I will be teaching uh, a class on, on spirits in October for um, the gathering of the witches, and it's up on my all my social media. You can see you see the the link for it, the announcement. In mm-hmm. November, I will be participating in the Bewitching the Water Symposium, and I will mm. be talking about a water witch. Mm. And my my goal, and I don't have, I mean, I haven't announced anything yet, and I don't have a waiting list or an email list or any of this yet. I would like to start teaching some small virtual classes probably early in 2024. Good. Just spell casting, all, all sorts of different, you know, different topics. I would, I would like mm-hmm. to do, you know, something, something small groups, reasonably priced, mm-hmm. Zoom, you know, so uh, I'm figuring that out. But, all right. But the uh, Gathering of the Witches and Bewitching the Waters, those are definite. So give out your website so people can find out about your books. Oh, and no, your... it's under construction. It's under construction, but I have it's up okay. on all my social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. That's okay. That's supposed to find me. Okay, so it's Judica Illis, I-L-L-E-S. And, right. um, yeah, she, she's easy to find. She's busy, but she's always easy to find. <laughs> yes. No, no, and the website will eventually be up, but, it, but it's not up tonight. Okay, all right. All right, so the hour flew by, and I want to thank you for joining us tonight because, I mean, we scratched the surface, and, you know, that's a start. Thank you so much for having me, Marla. Anytime, and let's not make it quite as long as it was this time. Um, (laughs) But thank you, everybody else, for listening in also. And until next time, everybody, blessed be and merry meet again. Good night. This has been another edition of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. Be sure to tune in next week at the same time for another great guest and more fun. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without permission is strictly prohibited. Copyright 2009. You have been listening to the Para-X Radio Network. 